Why is it that you began your software career or your first dev job alongside of someone with the same skill set as you, and then two years later, they've leveled up, they've moved on and gotten promoted, and you are in the same place where you began? Is it a skill issue? No. The reason is what we're going to talk about today. And by the end of this video, you'll have a framework in place to level up to get that promotion and advance your dev career faster. So I came across this gem of an article. I run across these every now and then. And when I do, I like to share them with you all. So there are two paths which portray the differentiators of fast rising developers or developers who get promoted at a faster rate than others. There's the traditional path and then there's the fast track path. With the former, you're looking at probably four years until any promotion, whereas the latter, you're looking at maybe one to two. And it's not only about promotion, it's about your value in your career overall. One path makes you a valuable developer, while the other makes you an easily replaceable and boring dev. And if you aren't becoming a valuable dev, especially in this economy, then you need to make these adjustments we're going to talk about, and you need to make them a part of your lifestyle or character in your career. Now, before we dive into all of this, let's quickly hear a word from today's sponsor, Jam, a free browser extension that generates one-click bug reports. When we come across a bug in our application, it can be quite the process to document it, take screenshots, and explain the issue in a way that really demonstrates the problem well. Well, the folks over at Jam.dev have created a free Chrome extension to streamline this process for you. Say I come across a bug in my app. I click the button here and it disappears. Uh-oh. I need to document this and get it to the rest of our team for someone to fix. With Jam, I can choose Record Tab and create a quick recording of the problem as it happens. When that's done, I have a shareable link to a screen recording to pass to the team or add to a ticket. But I not only have the video proof, I also have the console messages, network requests, repro steps, and information like what system I was on, what time, browser, URL, etc. All the info any dev would need to really troubleshoot the issue with ease. And not only can I share the link, but I can also choose to send it directly to Jira. Asana, Slack, and more. What if I just need a screenshot of a design issue that needs fixing? Well, I can capture a screenshot and then draw whatever I need to show off the problem. Now, best of all, what if I come across a bug unexpectedly or a bug that I can't seem to reproduce with a teammate? Well, with Jam, I can, at any time, choose instant replay to get my last 30 seconds of browser activity with all the critical information. This is a real time saver for any dev team out there to better pinpoint bugs as they develop. And again, Jam is free to sign up. Just go to jam.dev and choose get started for free today. Now back to the video. So let's first look at the traditional path and you'll know pretty quickly if this is the path you're on, even if you didn't sign up for it or even know you're on it. And there are four key traits here. And by the way, this article is titled why some junior developers get promoted in one year while others take five and it's published on Medium. And here are the four traits of a developer on the traditional path. Number one, focus solely on assigned tasks. Number two, avoids conflicts or additional responsibilities. Number three, only learns what's required for current projects. And number four, maintains technical comfort zones. Is that you? Do these describe you? So when I was a new coder, this was me. I even said in a past article of mine, I believe, with the context being that junior developers have all the fun, that I just wanted people to assign me work and leave me alone so I can enjoy coding and not have to deal with all the other non-coding management stuff. I was only valuable in so much as I could perform the tasks that others assigned to me. Not that I added anything else of value or offered any expertise on the other 60% of duties that a developer has, but simply that I could get my own little tasks done. And when those tasks are done, I'm back to the food bowl to scoop up my next snack from those people on path two, the fast track path. And in this way, I avoided conflicts. I didn't perform any additional responsibilities. I was comfortable. In other words, I was boring, unopinionated, and easily replaceable. And when the time comes for that yearly review, not only is a promotion out of the question, but I'm pretty sure they're wondering who I even am. If this is you, you'll be the last in your group for promotions. You're not doing anything more than AI can now do, and you'll possibly be a first round pick in an upcoming layoff as well. And the faster you free your mind and habits of these kind of traits and adopt the traits we're about to look at, the more successful not only your career will be, but really how you approach life overall. So now let's contrast these traits with your coworker who started at the same time as you, same skill set as you, but got promoted in 15 months. Here are those traits. Number one, identify and resolve team bottlenecks proactively. Number two, build internal tools that improve workflow. Number three, engage in cross-functional team problem solving. And number four, consistently step outside their comfort zone. The keywords here are proactive, solution-oriented, and leadership. These are traits adopted by those who think 
outside the box. They think bigger than the tasks and contexts at hand. And these include a lot of soft skills. These traits make up those who realize that their task as a developer, DevOps engineer, system admin, whatever, is much more than just the technical. Widen out from the technical and you'll see the need for solutions bigger than just your piece of the pie. So I've told this story before numerous times, but there's many lessons in it, so I'll tell it again. I was on a contract job years ago where a team was responsible for all things infrastructure within AWS. And a guy from an outside company was assigned to work with us. He wasn't an amazing developer, I was on tasks where he was writing the code real time for us. It was mediocre. And he didn't have a CS degree, just like me. But he was proactive. He was solution oriented and had the marks of a leader. First, he questioned a lot of planning during sprint planning, where I was just accepting tasks that I thought I could handle. He was asking why we did it a certain way, why we even needed to do something, and he didn't care whether he could do it or not. He was confident that he could figure it out. So he would grab the tasks nobody wanted. And I remember one time the head guy over all the project had some issues with some kind of certificates and they asked who could help them. Well, not me. I don't want him to know my faults. But this guy, this other guy, jumped on it. He said, I'll take it. So the next day during the sprint planning, he gave an update that he actually called the guy and worked it out over the call. The mediocre junior coder working through the problem with the big guy in real time. In addition, he would go out of his way to create in-house solutions to problems or tasks that kept resurfacing. Oh, hey, you know those servers we keep having to reboot every day? Well, I went ahead and created some automation to restart the servers whenever these certain logs came across, so we won't have to keep manually doing it. So after 12 months on the project, when the contract was coming to an end, he had an offer from our company and the company behind the contract to leave his job and come work for them or come work for us. And the company behind the contract offered him 170K to sign. And look, he was in my opinion, no more skilled technically than I was at the time, but he had the traits listed above that made him miles more valuable to any team out there than me. So you need to zoom out and be a developer or IT professional who doesn't just stick to the tasks at hand only, but be a developer who is always looking at the bigger problem or the bigger puzzle to improve your team or company's workflow and works across the teams to a greater end goal. That's the kind of work that gets noticed. Now this article goes on to give three essential traits of promotion ready developers that I think are very helpful. The first one is an architect's mindset. So I have a video coming soon on the importance of diagramming and mapping out every task you perform or system you work within. But for now, check this quote from an engineering manager at Google. When I see a junior developer drawing architecture diagrams for a simple feature, I know that they're going to move up quickly. They're already thinking like a senior engineer. Junior developers jump directly into code upon taking a new task or working in a new system. Senior developers do not. And the reason they do not is that a task is usually within the context of an already existing code base or a bigger context. Your task is just a piece that fits into it. You have to map out how this task will work best within that context, and you can't do that on a whim solution you formulate in your mind. Now the action steps here create system diagrams for new features, even the small ones. Question existing systems, is there a way to make it more efficient or scalable? And then document your insights. Sharing your architecture insights with others demonstrates foresight and leadership. So here, again, it's about the bigger picture. None of this is really coding. This is that bigger value that makes you stand out apart from coding, which really anyone can learn to do. Number two is the multiplier effect. So promotion-ready developers don't just focus on their productivity, they increase their entire team's effectiveness. One of my turning points was creating a shared script that automated a time-consuming deployment task. Saving those 30 minutes daily for each team member made a noticeable impact on productivity and morale. Again, when there's a task the team is having to consistently repeat and you have the ability and time, it's this mindset that leads you into the action of automating this so that you can free up the entire team. The action steps here is identify repetitive tasks and automate them. Even simple scripts can save hours weekly. Write documentation proactively and mentor new team members. So think in the context of your broader team, not just yourself. And then the third one is important, the business translator. One of the best pieces of advice I received was think like a business owner, not just a coder. This perspective changed how I approached every task. And this is what I've been saying now for the past year. You are the business and your current main job is your primary client for your business. And as a business, you need to learn to talk business, to translate the technical into the actionable and colorful phrases that the stakeholders or leaders want to hear. And the action steps here are speak in metrics, not just technical details. For example, reduced error rate by 30% is more impactful than refactored code for the login page. The latter there is what developers want to hear, but you need to relate it to the business and how it helps the business. 
prioritize tasks based on business impact, and then translate complex technical concepts for non-technical stakeholders. That was a mouthful. So here is just keeping the business context in mind, again, not just your own individual work. There are other things here I think are helpful. I'll put a link to this article below. But here at the end, there are three steps that I think gives you a good starting point if you find yourself living in this traditional path we talked about earlier. So here are three things you can do today to kick off this new path. Number one, identify a problem in your team's daily workflow. Number two, write down three ways to improve it. And three, propose a simple solution in your next team meeting. These are probably three things you're not doing. And by doing these three things can shift that momentum the other way. He says here, remember Aaron, my colleague who got promoted in 11 months? He recently shared something interesting. Quote, I wasn't trying to get promoted. I was trying to solve problems that would make our team better. The promotion was just a side effect. And perhaps that's the biggest secret of all. The fastest path to promotion isn't focusing on the promotion itself, but on becoming the developer your team can't succeed without in being irreplicable. What do you all think? What's your opinion on the matter? I'd love to hear about it down below in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. And I'll see you in the next video.